everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ashley and I'm an architect in Ontario. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about the essential architecture softwares that you should be focusing on within the industry of architecture. So perhaps you're thinking about working in the industry or studying within an architecture school, but you're not sure what softwares you should be focusing on to really develop your skills within that particular program. So we're gonna be talking about both the professional realm and also the academic realm. So if you're interested, let's get started. Before we get started, I want to mention and talk about my experience within the industry and my background as well, because you're going to notice as we get into this video that depending on what you focus in within the architecture field, that really is going to determine the software skills that you need for a particular job or perhaps in architecture school as well. So I want to preface that I typically tend to focus my time on the front end of projects. So mainly in concept design, developing that concept, preliminary design, and then getting into design development. I do do projects in construction drawings, but my main focus 95% of the time is on the design front. So that tends to also influence the software and programs that you typically work on at, on a daily basis as an architect. So if you're a design architect or if you're a project management architect or a more technical architect, you're gonna have different tools and softwares. We're gonna get into that and I'm gonna break it down in this video and that should help you perhaps on developing an understanding of what software perhaps you should be focusing on and developing your skills further. Now let's talk a little bit about industry softwares. Now there is a lot of software out there and programs and typically as an architect, you need to know quite a few. And of course, depending on what you specialize, that's gonna determine also the amount of software. But in general, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be breaking down the software into key categories and this includes 3D modeling and sometimes 3D modeling is also includes the 2D aspect documentation and BIM and so that would be included and then I'm going to break it down also in 2D programs and then rendering animation and sometimes those actually can do both we'll get into that as well and then there's also plugins that you could use within the main programs as well so I'm going to be breaking it down in those categories let's talk about software preferences so before we jump into the software essentials, I want to also mention that depending on the practice or the school in which you're planning to attend, there's already some software bias, or I shouldn't say bias, but preferences. And so that's something important to keep in mind. There are many practices that only do Revit along with other 3D software like Rhino. So they only allow Revit and Rhino users into their practice. And so they've banned AutoCAD, they've banned SketchUp, and there's many reasons why they've done that. Maybe they've done that for productivity and for several factors as well. And so it's important to note that there is a wide variety here of practices that have different workflows and that they have different requirements in terms of software. Some practices are actually more open and they allow a hybrid of software users from 3D Max, from Rhino, all sorts of programs and others like to focus their workflow on two or three or four programs and they've banned other programs out of the practice. So there's different practices with different preferences in terms of software. And I've also experienced this even in architecture school. There are schools that have a preference for, let's say, Rhino, and I personally love Rhino, so I can see why that is. And then there's other schools that allow SketchUp, and I've seen some professors that ban SketchUp completely, and they want you to learn other more sophisticated software. So there's a lot of different things that come into consideration when you're trying to focus in on what software you should learn. Now I'm gonna be giving some of my opinions and perspectives and experience that I've had in the industry that, of the software that I do believe is essential. 
and then other softwares that you should know, but you don't need to have such a deep knowledge about. Number four, expertise. So depending on your expertise within the field of architecture, that will also determine the software knowledge that you need and what you should focus in on. So let's divide this into two different categories because architecture school and practice is a little bit different, but let's start with practice. If you're looking into working into a practice, you're gonna notice that there's different types of more focused job roles. Although some practices operate a bit differently in that you need to be more well-rounded and others are more skill of a, a specific skill set uh, to do a specific type of task or a phase of a project. So if you're going for a designer role, for example, you're gonna have to know a lot more programs versus someone that's only writing specifications versus someone that's doing more of the technical drawings, mainly doing construction drawings, detailing, and so on. So typically designers, because they're doing a lot of the production side of presentations and graphics and so on, you need to know a lot more programs. So what you plan to get into within architecture will also determine the essential softwares that you should be looking into. Now, when you're in architecture school, it's slightly different because you have to do the design, and so on. You have to do it all. You're a one band show per se. So you're doing all the front end work. You're doing all the work. So you have to produce everything. You're not working in a practice where it's kind of segmented into expertise and so on. But when you are in architecture school, you're kind of doing the 3D work, you're doing the rendering and so on. But what I find is that there's still people that tend to specialize in a particular program and some, school, and some schools are a bit more open in terms of the software. They're just looking at what the output is. They don't necessarily care what programs you're using. Although I do feel that the program does have an influence on the output as well. But sometimes nowadays uh, with plugins and so on, you can kind of produce the same results as with other programs. But I do think that some programs do offer some more efficiency and proficiency versus other software. So that's a whole side note, but some schools do ban some softwares, like I said, SketchUp, uh, they don't allow SketchUp or they emphasize Revit and so on. So it really does depend. And a lot of the programs too, I think it's important to note that the tools are important, but it's also about how you use the tools. So especially when you're in school, it's about how you use those tools, those tools to express and tell that story of the building, of the design, versus focusing too much on the tools. My personal opinion is as an architect and as a designer, you should aim to be more well-rounded because as you start to gain experience within the industry, knowing having more tools just allows you to do more, to also become a better leader and a better project manager. When you're able and you understand how all the programs work, you understand also how to organize the work and how to really delegate and be a lot more efficient with your time versus not knowing the ins and out of the software. And I think it's also important to note that if you do lose a team member, for example, and that team member was uh, focusing on producing, let's say diagrams in Illustrator or InDesign, and that person falls ill and your deadline is that day and you don't know that program, you're in a bit in trouble. You're gonna to have to find, find other ways to get it done. But if you know the program, it allows you a lot more flexibility because you're able to fill in the gaps where you can and you can keep the project going. So I really do think being well-rounded and well-versed in programs is important because these are tools that you could use to really develop your skill set, your design skill set, or even if you are a technologist or a project manager, I think it's important to know those programs. And so we're gonna get into those as well. So what are the essential softwares that you should know? We're gonna get into that and I'm gonna be dividing what are the essentials for designers, technologists, and project managers. So let's get started with what program you should know across the board this should not even depend on expertise in the industry. Everyone should know this program and that is Revit. 
Revit, Revit, Revit. You should know Revit. It's important to know. I'm also working on developing my Revit skills. They're still a little bit in the beginner side to intermediate, I would say. So it's important to really develop your Revit skills. Revit skills is really important. It's really in demand in the industry right now. So if you are looking for jobs within the industry, you're gonna notice that the majority of practices do ask for Revit skills. And I do think it is the program for the future. Those are the times of manually drawing everything. Now we have Revit. It is a smarter way of putting together a building, documenting a building and so on. So. I do feel that it's important across whatever discipline or industry or expertise you're in within the architecture field that you learn Revit. I also recommend in conjunction with Revit, AutoCAD. Now, I'm adding AutoCAD because AutoCAD is still used within the industry. There are still consultants that use it. So understanding how XREFs work, how to work with them, how to set up drawings, that's still important because the software is still being used in the industry. So although some practices ban it and in architecture school, you may have the opportunity to use AutoCAD, but I still recommend knowing AutoCAD. Now you don't need to learn it into like an expert level, but I would know how to set up drawings. And honestly, AutoCAD is quite simple to learn, I feel like. Revit is probably a little bit more difficult to grasp and AutoCAD would be a lot simpler. So I think it's worth the time to just understand how AutoCAD works, setting up drawings and so on. So now let's get into the different expertise areas and the essential softwares that you should know. So let's start with designers. So designers are those that work on the front end of projects from concept design, preliminary design, all the way up to design development. So I wanna get into the softwares that you should know. So starting with 2D, I would recommend the Adobe Creative Suite. And specifically within the Adobe Creative Suite, I would recommend learning Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign. Those are primary softwares that you should really learn and get to know because I call them my bread and butter because when you're working on creating presentations, laying out boards, you're gonna be using InDesign. Now, if you're looking at creating illustrations, diagrams and so on, you can use Illustrator. Now, I know a lot of people that create illustrations in Photoshop and skip Illustrator, but the quality is not the same. Photoshop is really what it's called, Photoshop. It's great for photos and so on. I don't like it so much for diagrams, especially if you want to really crisp and clean and high quality diagrams it should be done in Illustrator if you're doing illustrations. And then of course, Photoshop is very important if you're rendering and you wanna to touch up some of the renderings, add people and, and so on, collages and so on. And so you should know those programs. I would say those are the essentials. Then I would also dip into Premiere Pro because once you start creating videos and animations, it helps to have a program where you can edit the videos now, again, you don't have to, in a way, use Premiere Pro. You can use iMovie and there's a lot of other easier programs and free software that you can use to create videos, especially for if you're adding text and just small effects and so on. But I do think there is a lot more options and flexibility if you do use a more sophisticated program like Premiere Pro versus iMovie. It's a, just a bit more professional as well. The other thing I would recommend, and again, th these are not as essential, but I would say bonuses that can help elevate your work is Lightroom. I would also learn After Effects. You can get into creating animations as well in After Effects. I'm personally still learning about After Effects, but I think it's also a great software to learn. Again, not as essential, but I definitely do recommend to get into it because you can do some amazing things that can help to help you on as a designer to tell stories and to really convey the message about the building and your ideas. To add to it, of course, I would make sure you know your AutoCAD as well for the 2D aspect as well and Revit because you can also do 2D aspects in Revit. So those would basically be the essentials for the 2D aspect. Now, jumping on to the designer essentials for 3D software, I would make sure you know Rhino. Rhino is personally, maybe I'm biased here, but 
want a great 3D software for architects and designers to work with. And there's a lot of plugins that you can use within Rhino to produce uh, parametric design and so on. It's a great program and it's very efficient as well. That's what I love about it. And you could also get into SketchUp. There are many people that use SketchUp and there's actually a lot of great uh, plugins that you can use within SketchUp as well. So I would say knowing at least one or two, if you can know two of two 3D softwares, even better, but definitely knowing a few 3D softwares can help. And of course, I would say those are more the industry standards software. There are more 3D softwares out there like Maya. I had to learn Form Z when I was in school and it's not used in the industry. At least I haven't seen it yet, but those are not as common in the industry. I would definitely recommend getting to know Rhino and SketchUp. SketchUp is very simple. Once you get into, I would recommend getting into the plugins because that's where you can get a little bit more sophisticated with 3D modeling. If you're just using the basic function of SketchUp, it's very limited. Where you can start to get a little bit more sophisticated is through the plugins. And of course, I definitely recommend getting to know Rhino. It's a great program as well. And I know a lot of schools do push to learn Rhino and I know some practices do push for Rhino and less SketchUp. So again, depending on where you're applying, that may have an impact, but I would definitely recommend to learn Rhino and SketchUp. Now let's get into designer essentials for rendering and animation. Now this has quite a, variety, a wide variety of softwares you can get, and there's not so much limitations within the animation and rendering side, so the output, but some that it's really used in the industry is V-Ray, Lumion for animations, and you can do still images too, and Enscape as well. And you can use that as a plugin within SketchUp, within Revit, and within Rhino. So the again, the designer list is a bit longer. Now if we get into project management, as a project manager, as an architect that does focus on project management, I always think that it's important to be well-rounded in the programs, but you don't have a strong knowledge on all of the softwares mentioned. You could just be really specialized in Revit, in AutoCAD, and then have some additional softwares like have understanding of the Microsoft Suite, so working with Word documents, Excel documents, and project documents for scheduling and so on. And nowadays there's so many great management project management tools that you could use apps to manage a project, create uh, job checklists and so on. And every project manager, it's important to note that you have a different style of project managing. So you may have different tools according to it. But in terms of the project management tools, there's no real criteria there other than really understanding and knowing Revit and AutoCAD um, as a project manager. But if you're applying for project management roles, you'll notice there isn't too many softwares that you need to know of. So if you are a technologist within um, the architecture industry, having a real strong understanding of Revit is very important. As a designer, you can get away as a beginner intermediate, but as you get to design development onwards, you really need to have a strong understanding of Revit. And then of course you can use other plugins within Revit to help develop schedules and so on. So you really develop that strong understanding of the program. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, make sure to like the video. And if you wanna support the channel, make sure to subscribe. If you're looking for more information about what programs I use daily as an architect, I would check out this video here. I hope to see you on the next video. Until then, bye.